Did you know that President Lincoln had a personal bodyguard assigned to him the night he was shot at Ford's Theater? However, his bodyguard, John Frederick Parker, decided to abandon his post and head to the saloon next door to get drunk instead. And you know how the rest goes. But before we get into today's facts, welcome to Random Facts with Neil, the channel that explores the world of random, fun, interesting, useless facts. As somebody that loves learning new stuff but never has time to do it, I created this channel to make myself take time to learn new stuff every week and come back here and tell you what I learned. So hit the subscribe button, turn on all notifications, then meet me back here every week and we'll learn some new fun random stuff together. All right, you ready? Let's go. Fact number one. Now, when you look at this building, what's the first thing you think of? The name, right? Two word name, very simple and descriptive. It's a white house, the White House. So the White House was constructed in 1792, but it took a few years to build and actually wasn't occupied until the year 1800 when the second president of the United States, John Adams, was in office. Did you know the White House did not officially get its name until the year 1901? over a hundred years later. Before that, it had previously been called the President's Palace, the President's House, the Executive Mansion. It had occasionally in newspapers and other publications been called the White House a couple of times, but it wasn't until the 26th President, Theodore Roosevelt took office that he just looked at the house and said, it's white, it's a house. I'm calling it the White House. Duh. Fact number two. Now we're gonna talk about two of the most important figures in our nation's history, two of our founding fathers, Thomas Jefferson and John Adams. Now the two met in 1775 when they were members of the Continental Congress in Philadelphia. And from that point on, they would be tied to each other in a variety of ways that are kind of mind blowing. Uh, starting with both being part of the committee that helped draft the Declaration of Independence, both serving terms first as vice president, then president, even serving on the same administration, with John Adams as president and Thomas Jefferson as vice president, to being close friends, to being lukewarm friends, to being bitter, bitter political rivals, to not speaking at all. Yeah. By the time Jefferson took office in 1801, the two openly hated each other and are thought to have created what we consider now current modern political warfare. <laughs> so fast forward 10 years to about the year 1811, and the two actually would resume their relationship uh, through a written correspondence that they would continue through the rest of their lives. But the ties didn't end there. Did you know Thomas Jefferson and John Adams died on the exact same day? And it was July the 4th, 1826. That's right. How fitting that two of the most important figures in the founding of our nation die on the same day and on the day of our nation's independence. Now, while Jefferson did pass away hours before Adams, Adams was unaware of this. And according to reports, his last words actually were, Thomas Jefferson survives. Which I'm sure he said exactly like that. Fact number three. Now we're going to talk about our eighth president, Martin Van Buren who was elected in 1836 and served until 1841. But before that, he was a bunch of different stuff. He was a lawyer. He was a founding member of the Democratic Party. He was a US Senator. He was even briefly governor of New York, um, which also speaking of New York, he was the inspirational figure of a late 20th century street gang. Um, but before he was any of that, did you know our eighth president, Martin Van Buren, was the first elected president to have been born a United States citizen, having been born just six years after the founding in 1782. So it only took our country seven presidents and 61 years to finally have a natural born citizen elected president. So props, MVB. Fact number four, let me ask you this. Back when you were in school, or if you're in school now, what's the longest term paper, research paper you ever had to write? 25, 30, 40 pages? 40 days. That would be awful. It sucks, right? Well, what if it saved your life? Mm, that's 
Kind of the case with our next fact, which involves 26th President Theodore Roosevelt, who served from 1901 to 1909. And then he decides in 1912 he wants another term, but his old party, the Republicans, won't have him, so he runs with the progressives. So uh, you don't care, you don't care, you don't care. Anyway, he's in Milwaukee in October of 2012. 2012. 1912. And out of a crowd, in a crowd, walks John Fleming Schrenk, who walks right up to him, points a gun at him, and point blank range fires one shot into the former president. Game over, right? Well, fortunately, Roosevelt was on his way to give a long, 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 boring campaign speech, which he had tucked in the inside pocket of his jacket. Did you know President Theodore Roosevelt's life was saved by his 50-page campaign speech? That's right. The would-be assassin's bullet entered his right uh, breast pocket of his jacket, hitting his speech, which slowed the bullet down just enough that it saved his life. Had the speech not been in his pocket, it surely would have killed him. And uh, after that, Roosevelt actually went on to give the speech anyway, which is kind of funny. On a side note, uh, Schrank was immediately swarmed by the crowd, and Roosevelt even had to uh, convince the crowd not to kill him right there on the spot, which is pretty uh, pretty nice, considering they, uh, they did beat the shit out of him, though. Yeah. Fact number five. So I'm not going to give you any real setup for this one, because it's way more mind-blowing without it. So I'll give you just a little bit of info. We're going to talk about our 10th president, John Tyler, who was born in the year 1790, served as president from 1841 to 1845, and died in 1862. Now, with that information, did you know, as I stand here today, John Tyler, born in 1790, still has a living grandson. Not great-grandson, grandson. That's right. Now, for the explanation. So, during his life, Tyler was our most prolific president, so to speak, fathering 15 children. The earliest in 1815, and the latest just two years before he died in 1860. That's a little long in the tooth. So, yeah, it's a little long in something. I don't, don't put that in. So, like his father, his 13th child, named Lion, for some reason, born in 1853, also enjoyed having children late into life. Uh, in fact, he didn't even marry his second wife until 1921, after which they had three children up into the year 1928. Thus, Harrison Ruffin Tyler, who is now 94, is still alive and well today. And in fact, his brother only died as recently as the year 2020. So, holy f Fact number six. Now we're going to talk about Andrew Jackson, who is our seventh president and served from 1829 to 1837. But more specifically, we're going to talk about his pet, which was a bird named Pole. Now, Jackson got Pole in 1827 as a gift for his wife, Rachel. But uh, tragically, Rachel passed away that following year in 1828 before Jackson even took office. But Jackson kept the bird, took him to Washington, served out his term, and even kept the bird for the rest of his life until he passed away in 1845. Now, if you know anything about African greys, they're extremely intelligent and can be taught a variety of skills. Um, so for the next 15 plus years, Paul learned quite a lot from Jackson, uh, most notably his ability to swear like a sailor. So when Jackson dies in 1845, thousands of people turn out for his funeral. Um, including Pole, who was in attendance at his funeral, at least for a little while. Did you know that Andrew Jackson's pet parrot had to be removed from his funeral because it would not stop swearing incessantly at all the guests? According to Reverend Norman, who presided over Jackson's funeral, this is hysterical, he, uh, according to him, he said, uh, people were awed and horrified at the bird's lack of reverence. How much reverence is a bird supposed to have? But anyway, so 
pole couldn't control his mouth and he had to be removed. So, bird at a funeral. It's ridiculous. Okay, let's recap today's facts. Fact number one. The White House did not officially get its name until the year 1901. Fact number two, two of our founding fathers, Thomas Jefferson and John Adams, both died on the exact same day, July the 4th, 1826. Fact number three, our eighth president, Martin Van Buren, was the first president to be born a U.S. citizen. Fact number four, Teddy Roosevelt had his life saved by a 50-page campaign speech. Fact number five, John Tyler, the 10th president of the United States, still has a living grandson. And fact number six, Andrew Jackson's pet parrot had to be removed from his funeral for a foul mouth. All right, that's it for today. Hope you got something out of today's video. In addition to subscribing, please be sure to check out our social media platforms for more random facts. This has been Random Facts with Neil, and now we know what we didn't know.